The films we saw were taken by an amateur photographer who had a particularly good vantage point just past the building from which the fatal shot was fired. The films show President Kennedy's open black limousine making a left turn off Houston Street onto Elm Street on the fringe of downtown Dallas. A left turn made just below the window in which the assassin was waiting. About 35 yards past the very base of the building, just below the window, President Kennedy could be seen to, to put his right hand up to the side of his head to either brush back his hair or perhaps rub his eyebrow. President Kennedy was sitting on the same side of the car as the building from which the shot came. Mrs. Kennedy was by his side in the jump seat in front of them. Mrs. Connolly and Governor Connolly. Governor Connolly on the same side of the car as the president and in the front seat two secret service men. Just as the president put that right hand up to the side of his head, he, you could see him lurch forward. The first shot had hit him. Mrs. Kennedy was looking in another direction and apparently didn't see or sense that first shot or didn't hear it. But Governor Connolly in the seat in front appeared to have heard it or at least sensed that something was wrong. The governor's coat was open. He, he reached back in this fashion, exposing his white shirt front to the assassin's window. He reached back as if to to offer aid or ask the president something. At that moment, a shot clearly hit the governor in the front, and he fell back in the seat. Mrs. Connolly immediately threw herself over him in a protective position. In the next instant, with this time Mrs. Kennedy apparently looking on, a second shot, the third total shot, hit the president's head. He, his head could be seen to move violently forward. And Mrs. Kennedy stood up immediately. The president leaned over her way. It appeared that he might have brushed her legs. Mrs. Kennedy then literally went on the top of the trunk of the Lincoln car, put practically her whole body on the trunk. It appeared she might have been on her all fours there, reaching out for the Secret Service man the lone Secret Service man who was riding on the bumper of the car, the back bumper on Mrs. Kennedy's side. A Secret Service man leaned forward and put his hands on Mrs. Kennedy's shoulder to push her back into the car. She was in some danger, it appeared, of rolling off or falling off. And we described this before. There was some question about what we meant by Mrs. Kennedy being on the trunk of the car. Only she knows, but it appeared that she was trying desperately to, to get the Secret Service man's attention or perhaps to helped pull him into the car. The car never stopped, it never paused. In the front seat, a Secret Service man was, was on the telephone. The car picked up speed and disappeared beneath an underpass.